Ladies and gentlemen, put on your headphones, crank up the volume, and smash the subscribe button. Sit back and enjoy some of the best exhaust notes that you have ever heard on this planet. These are the 10 best sounding stock exhausts ever. So buckle up, let's go. Okay, so this is a list of the best sounding cars of all time, and they're in no particular order because they all sound so good. But it's fair to say that most of these cars aren't what you would call cheap. And the Porsche Carrera GT is a great example of this. Why? Well, because today's examples of the CGT are trading for just under $1 million. But I wouldn't be surprised if their owners were just paying for that glorious exhaust note. <laughs> I mean, come on people, I could just listen to that all day long. Plus, our friends Damon and the crew over at DDE just bought one, and they are in the process of straight piping it. Let's go. I mean, stock, it sounds so good. But straight piped, I mean, come on. That is otherworldly. I should just end this video right here. Now, we gotta thank the guys over at Porsche for stuffing this magnificent 5.7 liter F1 V10 into this timeless body. Yeah, the CGT was destined to be an actual Le Mans race car, but that never happened and we're left with the CGT as you see it today. Luckily, there were 1,270 cars that Porsche produced and they will thunder into oblivion all the way up to its naturally aspirated 8,000 RPM redline. And shifting gears, this one of the best parts is all up to you and your left foot. If you want to help save the manuals, go snag one of our best-selling Ideal Tees. Because from one V10 to another, the Lexus LFA is by far the best sounding car to come out of Japan. Wait, hold up. You're telling me that a Lexus has one of the best sounding cars in the world? Are you kidding? Well, if you don't believe me, I mean, just take a listen. Lexus spent over a decade in development before the road-going supercar was released to the public in 2009. The LFA, it's just so over-engineered that Lexus co-developed the V10 engine with their friends over at Yamaha. And no, not with the motorcycle department, but actually their instrument division. You see, this V10 is probably the only car ever to be musically tuned. <laughs> and it sings its way all the way up to that 9,500 RPM redline. Sadly, Lexus only built 500 LFAs in the world and most people overlook them. And that's because they came out the exact same year as, well, the Nissan GTR did. And on paper, the GTR was faster and just better. Not to mention that the price was like a quarter of that of the LFA. But the GTR doesn't sing quite like the LFA does. <laughs> Sadly, the LFA sings to the tune of half a million dollars or more today. And that's a bargain if you ask me, but I better start a GoFundMe if uh, I'm ever gonna afford one. Now, if you were to ask me what my dream car would be, this one would be at the top of my list. It's the Pagani Zonda 760 LM. And yeah, that would surely break pretty much anybody's bank account and probably blow out your eardrums in the process. <laughs> You see, the 760 was one of the last runs of the Zondas. And as a farewell to Zondas, these Paganis mean business, as they are the most powerful road-going Zondas ever. Powered by an AMG-derived 7.3-liter V12, which snarls with 800 horsepower up to an 8,000 RPM redline, this thing just spits and sputters F1 sounds to everyone within miles of these cars. <laughs> And I say these cars because there are only two of them, a coupe and a roadster, if you like to go topless. 
So sure, yes, there are other Zondas that sound good, but even the Cinque had five coupes and five roadsters. So even hearing a 760 LM is a massive treat and one that I wish I could wake up my fiance with each and every day. <laughs> Now this next car comes from the same country, but drops four cylinders. And it's quite a bit more affordable. It's from the company Alfa Romeo, and it's called the 8C Competition. And this thing <laughs> is easy on the eyes. It's a masterfully created piece of art. And boy, oh boy, does that artwork sound good. The 8C gets its notes thanks to the Ferrari F136 engine. And you may recognize this exhaust note from the Ferrari F430, the F458, and a number of Maseratis. And this goes without saying, but that is one of the most legendary V8s ever produced. If you wanna go see more about the best V8s ever, well, make sure to go check out this ideal vid. Now, the 8C, it was the first car that Alpha brought back to the US after nearly 15 years of being, well, MIA. And it paved the way for the likes of the spunky little 4C and the Savage Julia and Stelvio Quadrifoglio models. The company only made 508 C coupes at a hefty price of $301,600 US. And they decided to make 500 Spiders with even more drama for a cheaper price, $299,000 US. And not only did the Spider drop the top, but it also dropped the top speed from 181 miles per hour to a slow 180 miles per hour. But unfortunately, the US only got 35 spiders. So they truly are a sight to see and hear. But from a meaty eight cylinder to a roaring 12. The Ferrari F12 TDF earns its way onto this list with one of the best sounding 12 cylinder engines on the planet. The TDF is based on the already bonkers F12 and the TDF turns that recipe up to 11, taking the naturally aspirated 6.3 liter V12 from 730 horsepower to 769 horsepower. Hellcat who? <laughs> Not only does the TDF make all of this power, but it revs all the way up to 8,900 RPM. And it will do it all day and all night. Unfortunately though, there were only 799 units made and they trade somewhere north of $1 million a piece. Luckily, well, a Dodge Viper ACR is the fifth of a price of a TDF. And the ACR might sound just as mean as a TDF. But while the TDF is a V12, the ACR is a massive 8.4 liter V10. And you gotta be careful around this thing because, well, this snake has a massive bite. The venomous sound exits right by the doors, so you're sure to get an earful of thunderous V10 every time you drive it. And having driven a Gen 1 V10 halfway across the country from nowhere Nebraska all the way back to Seattle, the best part about those side exhausts, when you park and it just idles, it has so much thrust that it will move the dust on the ground. It is pretty epic. Now, it's gonna test you because you're gonna have to wrangle all that power through a manual six speed, which we all know that you guys love. And you gotta be careful with this rowdy ride because it was designed for track use. And the ACR is the fastest American car to ever lap the Nürburgring in a blistering seven minutes and one second. And that's hypercar speed. But unlike hypercars, with their fancy hybrid systems, turbos, or dual clutch transmissions, the Viper ACR is still naturally aspirated and only comes with a manual. While the Lamborghini Murcielago SV, on the other hand, is a naturally aspirated V12 with only five or six that came from the factory as a manual. <laughs> But the Mercy SV is no joke whatsoever, even with that automated E-gear transmission, which shift its way through its gear all the way to its glorious 8,250 RPM redline. And you can listen to this thing scream all the way to over 200 miles per hour. <laughs> Ha 
I mean, tell me that it doesn't sound like it is just ready to take off. Like the manual SVs, the E-Gear Mercies are rare too, because they only produced a total of 186 units. Sadly, they planned on making 350 in total, but they stopped production early to make way for the introduction of the Aventador. And sure, the Aventador, pff, I wouldn't kick it out of my garage. It sounds great. <laughs> But it's got nothing on the scream of the Mercy SV or even, do I say it? A GT350R Mustang. So unlike the Lambos, the GT350R, well, it probably wasn't sitting on your bedroom wall as a kid, but it also doesn't come with a six figure price tag as well. I mean, new, they started at roughly 70,000 bucks, which yes, is still pricey, but it is not astronomical. And let me tell you that this price is justified with this exhaust note. Thanks to that voodoo flat plane crank 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V8, Ford was able to get the GT350R to rev all the way up to 8,250 RPM. But sadly, like all the other cars mentioned before, Ford is taking the GT350R out of production. Whether it's because it targeted crowds or just drank too much oil, they've given way to the cheaper GT500 to take its place, <sighs> leaving us with the memory of its glorious exhaust note. But one car that's still in production is the Jaguar F-Type. And yeah, this thing is crazy no matter which engine you choose. You're gonna have amazing sound. From the V6 to the R. But what about the SVR? Okay, no matter which engine you choose, you will have one of the best sounding cars on the planet. And if you wanna buy this one or any of the other ones in this list, although some of them are pretty expensive, go check out the Ideal Car Strategies where you can buy the car like a pro and negotiate like a pro. Because the best part about this F-Type is that you're not gonna to have to shell out an arm and a leg to afford one. I mean, you can buy one for less than 30 grand, which sounds pretty good, right? Well, not as good as the exhaust note, I know. The Jag is one of the most prestigious manufacturers from across the pond, and people just love them. But what happens when Korea makes a hot hatch aimed at younger enthusiasts? Well, you get the Hyundai Veloster N. Now, this is straight up one of the most overlooked and underrated cars. I'm guilty of not really knowing much about them. And that's partly because the Veloster N looks pretty unassuming at first. But once you get behind the wheel and unleash the beast, yeah, that little two liter turbo motor puts out a peppy 275 horsepower. And that power rushes through the exhaust in one of three modes. But we're sticking with the Sport Plus. Standard on a car you can have for less than 30 grand brand new. So you gotta tell me, what is the best sounding car out there, period? Let us know down in the comments because, well, you know that that Zonda 760 LM, yeah, it's a dream car or even a CGT or LFA. I mean, I wouldn't say no. So let us know the best sounding car in the comments and we're gonna be down there for the first couple hours after this video is released, answering all your questions and looking at your comments. Also, if you're new here, this is Ideal. I'm Brad Danger and please subscribe, turn on that notification bell and also hit that like button real hard because it lets us know that we're making good content and you wanna see more like this video. Oh, and as always, keep living the Ideal lifestyle. <laughs>